What if I told you that the innocent-looking pills sitting in your medicine cabinet, the ones you might take for a simple allergy, a restless night, or a bothersome bladder could be quietly plotting against your brain? It sounds like the beginning of a rather grim science fiction film, doesn't it? But a growing mountain of evidence suggests this isn't fiction at all. For millions of us, the very medications we rely on for daily comfort could be acting as a Trojan horse, smuggling in a risk that we are completely unaware of the gradual, silent erosion of our memory and cognitive function. It's a startling thought, one that might make you glance nervously at that little bottle of sleeping pills on your bedside table. This isn't about some obscure, rarely prescribed drug. We're talking about household names, the sort of things you can pick up at any chemist or supermarket. To understand how these medications can cause such mischief, we first need to meet a rather important character in our brain's daily drama, a neurotransmitter called acetylcholine. Think of your brain as a bustling, sprawling city with billions of buildings, which are your brain cells or neurons. For this city to function, to think, to learn, to remember, these buildings need to communicate with each other constantly. They need a reliable postal service, and that's precisely what neurotransmitters provide. Acetylcholine is one of the most critical postmen in this entire operation. You could call it the brain's master electrician or its spark plug. It is absolutely essential for firing up the circuits that control learning and memory. When you learn a new fact, like a friend's phone number, it's acetylcholine that helps forge the connection between neurons to store that information. But its job doesn't stop there. Acetylcholine is a true multitasker. Beyond the brain, it's also responsible for carrying messages from your nerves to your muscles, telling them when to contract. Every beat of your heart, every breath you take, and every step you walk is influenced by this remarkable chemical. So you can see why anything that interferes with this vital messenger could cause widespread problems. Imagine trying to run a city where the postal service suddenly goes on strike. Now that we appreciate our friend acetylcholine, let's talk about the villains of our story, anticholinergic drugs. The name itself gives us a clue. Anti means against, and cholinergic refers to acetylcholine. So quite simply, these are drugs that work against acetylcholine. They don't destroy the chemical itself, instead, they block its path. Think of acetylcholine as a key, and the receptors on your brain cells as the locks. When the key fits into the lock, a message is delivered, and a memory is formed. Anticholinergic drugs are like sticking a piece of chewing gum in the lock. The key can no longer get in, the door won't open, and the message goes nowhere. This blocking action is precisely why these drugs are effective for things like allergies or an overactive bladder. For instance, in the case of a runny nose, acetylcholine is the messenger telling your glands to produce mucus and tears. The problem is, these drugs are not very targeted. They are like a citywide power cut that's meant to turn off one faulty street lamp. While the drug is busy calming your bladder or drying your nose, it's also crossing into your brain and gumming up the works in your memory and learning centers. This isn't just a plausible theory. It's backed by a formidable body of scientific research that has grown increasingly difficult to ignore. One of the most powerful types of research is a meta-analysis, where scientists pool the data from many different studies to get a more reliable, big-picture view. A landmark meta-analysis published in 2021, which looked at data from over one and a half million people, delivered a clear verdict. Long-term use of anticholinergic drugs is an independent risk factor for developing dementia, including its most common form, Alzheimer's disease. The link was dose-dependent, meaning the more you take, the higher your risk. Another major review found something quite specific and alarming. It concluded that taking a strong anticholinergic drug daily for as little as three months could increase a person's risk of developing dementia by a staggering 46% compared to someone not taking those drugs. But perhaps the most compelling evidence comes from studies that have looked directly at the brain itself. A 2019 study published in the prestigious journal JAMA Neurology used MRI scans to peer inside the brains of older adults. The researchers found that those who were taking anticholinergic medications didn't just report feeling more forgetful. Their brains showed tangible physical signs of damage. They had increased brain atrophy, meaning their brains had literally shrunk, and lower metabolism in the hippocampus, the brain's primary memory hub, 
So, which specific medications should be on our watch list? It's crucial to name names because, honestly, many of these drugs are so common that we don't think twice about using them. The most well-known culprits with strong anticholinergic effects are the first-generation antihistamines. The prime example is diphenhydramine, which is the active ingredient in Benadryl, as well as in many over-the-counter sleep aids like Tylenol PM, Advil PM, and Unisom sleep gels. Next on the list are certain medications for an overactive bladder. These drugs are specifically designed to block acetylcholine to relax the bladder muscle, so it's no surprise they carry a high risk. The most common ones include oxybutynin, which you might know as ditropan, tolteridine, also called detrol, and solifenazin, or vesicare. One of the most insidious aspects of this problem is that the risk is cumulative. Experts talk about the anticholinergic burden, which is the total impact on your brain from all the different anticholinergic drugs you might be taking. A person might be taking a low-risk medication for allergies, another for bladder control, and a third for sleep. Individually, each might seem minor, but together they add up to a heavy burden on the brain's acetylcholine system. Because many of these are available without a prescription, it's easy for people to self-medicate for years, unknowingly creating a dangerous cocktail that steadily increases their dementia risk. While these medications can affect anyone, the risk is not distributed equally. Older adults, generally those over the age of 65, are profoundly more vulnerable to the brain-damaging effects of anticholinergic drugs. First and foremost is the natural decline in acetylcholine production that comes with age. A healthy 25-year-old has a robust supply of this crucial neurotransmitter. By the time you reach 65 or 70, your brain is already producing significantly less. So, when an older person takes a drug that blocks what little acetylcholine they have left, the impact is far more dramatic. It's like trying to run a car on a near-empty tank of petrol, and then discovering someone has put a kink in the fuel line. Another critical factor is the integrity of the blood-brain barrier. This is a highly selective, protective membrane that shields our brain from potentially harmful substances circulating in the bloodstream. In our youth, this barrier is strong and resilient, like a well-guarded fortress wall. As we age, however, this wall can become more permeable, or, you know, leaky. It's a triple whammy, less acetylcholine to begin with, a weaker defense system, and longer exposure to the drug. Finally, we have the issue of polypharmacy, which simply means taking multiple medications at once. This is incredibly common in older populations, who are often managing several chronic conditions like high blood pressure, diabetes, and arthritis. While anticholinergic drugs are a major concern, they aren't the only medications in your cabinet that could be quietly undermining your brain health. Other common drugs can pose risks through entirely different mechanisms, often by depleting the body of nutrients that are essential for cognitive function. Let's start with a class of drugs taken by millions every day for heartburn and acid reflux, proton pump inhibitors, or PPIs. You'll know them by names like Prilosec, which is omeprazole, and Nexium, or Esomprazole. By drastically reducing stomach acid, they can interfere with the absorption of crucial vitamins and minerals, most notably vitamin B12 and magnesium. A severe vitamin B12 deficiency is notorious for causing symptoms that can perfectly mimic dementia, memory loss, confusion, and cognitive slowing. Another group to watch is common painkillers. While occasional use of NSAIDs like ibuprofen, which you might know as Advil or naproxen, also called Aleve, is generally safe, chronic, long-term use can lead to kidney problems and high blood pressure, both of which are risk factors for vascular dementia. The key here is moderation and being aware that over-the-counter doesn't mean free of risk. Hearing all this can feel overwhelming. But please don't be discouraged. Knowledge is power, and there are concrete, practical steps you can take to seize control and protect your brain's future. This is about being a proactive and informed partner in your own health care. The first, most crucial step is to conduct a medicine cabinet audit. Make a complete list of every single medication you take including prescriptions, over-the-counter pills, vitamins, and supplements. Then, sit down with your doctor or pharmacist and review this list. Specifically ask them, could any of these medications have anticholinergic effects or be affecting my cognitive health? Next, actively discuss safer alternatives with your doctor. 
For many conditions, there are excellent options with little to no anticholinergic burden. For allergies, second-generation antihistamines like cetirizine, which you might know as Zyrtec, Loratadine, or Claritin, and Fexofenadine or Allegra, do not readily cross the blood-brain barrier and are much safer for your brain. For sleep, instead of a diphenhydramine-based aid, you could explore options like low-dose melatonin, magnesium glycinate, or relaxation techniques. If you are taking a medication known to be a nutrient thief, like a PPI, metformin, or a statin, talk to your doctor about monitoring your nutrient levels. A simple blood test can check for deficiencies in vitamin B12, magnesium, or CoQ10. If your levels are low, targeted supplementation can often resolve the issue and support your brain health. At the same time, you can double down on brain-healthy lifestyle habits, which are your ultimate defense. Regular physical exercise, a nutrient-dense diet like the Mediterranean diet, getting quality sleep, staying socially engaged, and challenging your mind with new activities all build cognitive reserve, a buffer that makes your brain more resilient to challenges, including the effects of medications. Ultimately, this journey is one of vigilance and empowerment. It's about shifting from being a passive recipient of pills to an active guardian of your own mind. By understanding the risks, asking the right questions, and working collaboratively with your healthcare provider, you can make informed choices that honor both your immediate needs and your long-term cognitive vitality. Your brain is your most precious asset, the source of your memories, your personality, and your connection to the world. Protecting it is not just a good idea. It is one of the most important things you will ever do, and the power to do so is, reassuringly, in your hands.